We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. I'm going to go into a difficult space with you here today, and I'm going to remind you that when you're dealing with narcissists, you can have lots of loose ends that can come into your life, and no matter what kind of excellent efforts you might make to make those loose ends go away, they can still remain. Narcissists are not cooperative. They don't really care about what they do to you and what kind of impact they have on you because they're all about themselves. Let's keep in mind that one of the things that's built into the pattern of narcissism is a rejection toward you. These are individuals who want to be dominant over you. That means that they have to look for reasons to explain why you have to be subordinate, and they'll find it, whether it's accurate or not, they'll find their reasons. They consider themselves to be above you. They consider their opinions to be the only ones that matter. They have a very low need to know you and understand you from your vantage point. They insist upon your conformity. And when you don't give them their conformity, now that conformity, they can become very dysregulated and anger. They must win. They have to be in the superior position. Now, you can get into the position of saying in reverse toward them, hey, wait a minute. I matter too. And you can go into strong protest mode and you can say that you're going to need to factor who I am into the equation. You need to pay attention to me. And you know what the narcissist is going to come back with? And this is the hard part. They're going to come back with, I don't need to do anything. I don't owe you anything. And there's a, uh, there, there's a, a continuing protest that you can have. And you can say, well, what about your sense of responsibility? What about your core decency? Do you not have any appreciation for the nice things that I've done for you? What about the promises you've made? And again, the narcissist is going to say, what about it? I don't care. Now, they can, there can be a whole lot of pain and tears and arguing and crying uh, in the midst of it. But there's one very difficult truth, a very hard truth, for you to have to come to terms with when a narcissist rejects you. And that's simply this. That narcissist, and for, ma for that matter, no one else, is obliged to accept you. Now, that's what you're asking for. You want to be accepted. But uh, that can be a very stark truth when you realize uh, uh, no person is required or obliged to, uh, to care about you, to be nice to you, to be fair-minded with you. Now, I know that can seem kind of stark and harsh, or even sometimes it can get to the point where you think, well, do you see the inhumaneness of it? And my response is, oh, I see it. I see it a lot. There's a dehumanization that these people bring to the equation. There's nothing that I like about it. There's nothing that's enjoyable. And yet we go back to that core truth. No one is obliged to accept you. Now, we'll take it further. Your, your protest can continue. You might think, well, yeah, but what if that person is grossly insensitive? What if their attitudes and their behaviors are truly destructive, especially just psychologically? What if that person neglects the basics of goodness? What if they neglect honor? What about their promises? And uh, what is it uh, uh, about you know, just a, a core sense of dignity uh, that they don't understand? Doesn't that matter? And I go back to that core truth. The narcissist is not under obligation to accept you. It's hard, isn't it? And then you say, yeah, but look at who that person is. Notice the role they play in my life. This is my father that I'm talking about. Uh, that, that father who doesn't know how to say I love you or that father who says nice things and then sabotages you behind your back. Or this is my mother we're talking about. You would think that a mother would have a, a core love for her children and yet she's so difficult. Do I have to accept the truth in that? 
What about that person that I, that was supposed to be my life partner, and then everything fell apart because of that? What about the fact that it might be my own adult child, my son and my daughter, who's been brainwashed by someone who's uh, way off base? Don't they have any kind of moral responsibility? What about, then we can take it on a larger level. What about my, my supervisor at work? What about our elected officials? What about people who claim to be righteous? I've been rejected by so many people there. Don't they have any kind of moral obligation to just be decent? And I go back to my core truth. No, they don't. That's sad. They don't have a moral obligation to accept you. And then you can go on with your protest and you can say, well, yeah, but family ties have been cut because of certain key people. I don't get to see my grandchildren because of certain people. Money has been mismanaged. Anger has become very ugly. Relationships have turned into triangulations where one person is played against another. My reputation has been smeared. The ones that I love the most have refused to seek me out because they don't want to get caught in all of the crossfire. Doesn't that matter? And my response is, still, the narcissist is under no obligation to accept you. That's really harsh. Uh, they're not under any obligation to be conscientious. They're under no obligation to listen to you. They're under no obligation to change. They're no under no obligation to be fair. And your protest can continue and you can say, but this is so wrong on so many levels. And yet there it is. And then let's take it a little bit further. The, the deeper you go into your efforts to try to remind that narcissistic person how wrong they are, you know what they're going to do rather than saying, you know, upon further thought, I think I'll make, I'll change my whole personality. What they do is they get stubborn and they rationalize and then they reject the fact that they have any kind of uh, need to listen to you. And then you can go into what I call mythical thinking. You know, you, you hear yourself say phrases like, I just wish, fill in the blank, or they need to understand, fill in the blank. Or why can't they just admit, fill in the blank. Now, I say all of this, and this is after me counseling with many, many people for over 40 years and talking with people at workshops and seminars and, uh, and then also uh, comments that we have here on our uh, channel and our vlog. I know it's hard when you are on the receiving end of something that's gross uh, and when I say gross, it's just exaggerated and it doesn't need to be there. But you see, there's, uh, there's, when I say the core truth is that they're under no obligation to show acceptance toward you. Uh, instead, they'll just be rejecting. We need to remember before a person can give you a sincere yes, they also need to have the option of being able to say no. And one of the things we're going to acknowledge about narcissists is they are stuck on no. They have said no to life. They have said no to themselves. There's a, there's a pessimism that they operate with. The, uh, the root system to this showed up long before you were ever in their life. And no amount of pleading or persuading or convince, convincing is going to move them off of that no. And this includes people who are in a position to potentially enhance your quality of life, but they choose not to. Now, when you accept this one very hard truth about narcissists and their rejection toward you, there are corollary truths that we're going to uh, go along with that, that run parallel. Uh, for example, one of the corollary truths is pain in this life exists. That pain can sting. That pain can linger, sometimes for years, sometimes for decades. It's sad, and yet it's true. Also, another corollary truth is uh, exaggerated irrationality exists. There are some people that seem to you to be as dumb as a tree stump, and yet to them it's like, makes sense to me. And you want to just go and shake them and kind of knock some sense into their head, but it, it won't make any difference. They, they have exaggerated irrationality, and it's been there since day one. Uh, in addition, we're also going to say bad things can happen to good people. 
I know that you want to be a good person. You want to have a sense of core decency. And yet that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be immune from bad circumstances. Another corollary truth is you're not always going to get the good in life that you deserve. I, I wish that I could say it would be there, but this is a broken world and sometimes broken things happen and you can't make it not happen. Sometimes another corollary truth is even your very best uh, efforts, your very best explanations can fall short. Rejection can come from people who are caught in the middle of the triangulation games that narcissists play. And when I say that, they play one person off of another. And sometimes you lose very key people in your life that you so much want to have love and, uh, and a connection with. And yet there it is. So really when you see the, uh, the rejection that comes along and all the no that goes along with, rege uh, with the narcissist toward you, and then you have all these protests on the inside, I'm not going to say that your protests are wrong and the emotion and the grief and the anger and the agony that you can sometimes feel. I'm not going to say that it's wrong because it makes total sense to me, um, perhaps more so than you can ever imagine. I, I Like I say, I've, I've um, spoken with so many individuals and yet there it is. They're still under no obligation to be a decent person. So this brings you back to you coming to terms with the one person you know you can do something about, and it's not that stubborn narcissist, it's who you are. I'm hoping that in the midst of their rejection toward you, you're going to still be a yes person, and it begins with you saying yes to yourself. I accept myself, flaws, mistakes, miscalculations, good ingredients, and all the rest for what I am. I'm going to love myself. And I'm going to have a sense of core decency in me. And even if that narcissist and some of the people that go into their system with them don't want to join me, I, I just can't be any other way than decent and good. And I'm going to connect myself with individuals who do understand uh, the good things in life. I'm a person of worth and dignity. And despite that person's uh, rejection and, and despite the fact that they don't really feel any moral obligation to accept me, those truths cannot be taken away from me. So like I say, it's, it's difficult to go into this kind of space and to remind yourself there's some things that you just simply don't have the ability to change. Um, but what I what, what we do say is you can change yourself from the inside out. Let's go in that direction. That's what we do here on Team Healthy. Dignity, respect, and civility, starting with that toward yourself. Now, I hope that videos like this can give you some good thought about who you can be and how you can proceed despite some of the, uh, the ache that you might have in your life. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming to you, and I want it to be growth producing. Uh, if you have a need to sort this out, and I know so many times when you're dealing with something like this, it can be so essential. You know that I've received very good feedback from individuals uh, who've uh, gone through my, my suggestion here by BetterHelp.com, our sponsor. There's a link below to their website. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. It's affordable, it's accessible, and, and uh, they can get right to you. So please, if the uh, if the need is there, seek that out. And I, I hope that you can go in the right direction despite some of the wrong people that are there. Also, I have my uh, courses, and they're meant to be uh, uh, very much thought-provoking. Each course has at least 25 videos with written documentation, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connections with people. This is me about establishing boundaries with those difficult folks. Free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We have my webinars. We have my podcast. Lots of articles on our website. We have my books. So please avail yourself to the, uh, uh, to the resources we have. I know, I know, I know. It's difficult when that narcissist is so rejecting and the fallout can be uh, much of what you don't want. And yet there it is. Uh, they're, un they're under no obligation and they're no people. Uh, but I'm still hoping that in, in at the end you can say, but the bottom line is I deserve love. And it starts with me loving others and me being a person of love despite their inability to be that way. So uh, I hope that that's a mindset you can hold on to for all it's worth. And in the process, it, it's still possible for you to find your sense of peace. I so want you to have peace.